Welcome to Lab Prep Video 3, where we'll talk about sedimentary and metamorphic rocks. In lab, you're going to have two different sets of rocks, one that's sedimentary, one that's metamorphic, and then a box of a whole bunch of different type of rocks that you're going to use for this last portion of your lab. You're also going to have some testing supplies, and then of course the documents that you should have printed out before coming to class, and the identification charts for both sedimentary and metamorphic. So what I'm going to do is run through some of the basic properties of each of these two rock types and give you some examples. And we're going to correlate nicely with these ID charts, just like we have in our last few videos. So you'll record your information on those blank charts and then use that information to identify each of these rock types. So the first step with identifying sedimentary rocks is to look at texture. So you're either going to have coarse or fine. So coarse grain, like you can see here, you can see large chunks in your mineral. Some of them might be a little bit smaller, but you can still see them. And also, when you feel it, it feels kind of like a sandpapery type texture. Um, some of the crystals might be pretty big. You might see larger chunks, like you can see this nice round one as well. So this is going to be coarser grained. Finer grained are going to be so fine where you can't actually even see any of the crystals with the naked eye, such as these. So these are all really, really fine grain, can't see any mineral crystals at all in these. So the next thing you'll do is test the sample to see if it is harder or softer than glass. So same as identifying minerals, hold your glass plate on the table, take your rock sample and then scratch it on the glass, and then see the scratch that was left behind. And you can also test to see if it is harder or softer than your fingernail by scratching the rock and then seeing if any of it came off on your finger. And if it did, that means it's softer. So to get into more detail with the texture, we can also categorize these by size more specifically. And the grain sizes are mud, would be the finest, so so fine you can't see any of the crystals at all. And then we have sand-sized particles. So these are range in size here to just barely visible. You can feel them. feels gritty on your fingertips. They're a little bit larger where you can actually start to see them. And in this case here, you have some chunks that are a little bit bigger here uh, in those sand-sized particles. And then the next size up would be gravel sized. I have two examples for you here. These are both gravel sized particles. You can see the big black one here, another whitish colored tan sample in this one. And then on this sample here, all those little spots that are reflecting the light are cleavage faces of one specific mineral. So pretty, pretty large crystals there. And then, of course, the last one would be cobble-sized, pebble or cobble, which is basically the, the size of this whole entire sample. So those are your different grain sizes. You can also look at grain shape. So I pull these two back into the frame here. And this sample here, these, this grain shape is pretty round. So we call that rounded. In this case here, all of these mineral grains have a very boxy square shape. So these would be angular. And then if you have something that's kind of in between, you can't necessarily choose which one, then you could say subangular or subrounded. And the last textural description is arrangement. Is it totally random? Do you see a bunch of different chunks all over, not arranged at all? Or do you see those grains aligning themselves into these nice flat sheets and kind of see how those clay particles are aligning themselves parallel to each other in that sample. So after you've determined the texture, you're going to look at the mineral composition. So if you take your sample and you test it with acid, then the acid will bubble if you have calcite present. It fizz like crazy. So that means that mineral composition is calcite. If it tastes salty, remember, ask me, don't taste it. If it tastes salty, then you're going to have halite present. 
if you have little bits of shell fragments. This one will also react to acid because shells are actually made of calcite. So we'll see that fizz like crazy and then you can see all the little bits of shell all stuck to each other. And then we've got this kind of nice whitish colored sample that's also harder than glass. This is made of quartz fragments. And then if it has a pinkish color to it, like these samples here, these little fragments, are pink in color, then it's going to have feldspar present. And the last type of composition is rock fragments. So in this sample here, we've got a chunk of basalt, we've got a little bit of a pumice, sandstone here, all together in one larger rock. So a couple different types of other rocks within one larger rock. So that's going to be our composition. The last category is to tell if your sample is detrital or made of chunks of other rocks all glued together. These are a good example of rocks or minerals that are all just stuck together. You can see the individual boundaries of those particles all glued together. Is it chemical? Did the minerals precipitate out of water? So in this case here, all these mineral grains are actually interlocking into one another, like, kind of like puzzle pieces. And so this would be a chemical rock. Or does it have signs of biologic activity? Do you see shell fragments, fossils present? Coal would be a good example. It would be all biologic in origin. So when you're identifying metamorphic rocks, you're going to look for foliation, banding, or no foliation at all. This rock we have here has what's called banding and foliation. Foliation is the alignment of minerals. Banding is the separation of those minerals into individual colored layers. So here we can see these stripes that run across the sample. So this is foliation because the minerals have aligned themselves parallel to one another. But also, these different color bands, the light and the dark, looks kind of like zebra stripes. These are these color bands that develop in some of these rocks. So this would be your banding. So if a mineral or rock is foliated, what you will see is you'll see that the mineral grains tend to align themselves. And you'll see this kind of parallel alignment of the minerals. Even if it's too fine-grained for you to see any minerals in it, you'll still see the expression of the layering in the actual rock itself. So for example here, this sample has large enough crystals for you to see with your eye. You can see the mica in this sample reflecting the light. That's one cleavage face. They're all aligned and stacked up parallel to each other. When I rotate it around, you can see it has that expression of the foliation. They're all stacked up on top of each other. Keep rotating it around to the other side, and you can see that, again, we see those mineral grains all reflecting the light. So they're all parallel to one another. Here's just another example of a fine-grained one. You see it kind of glittering and shiny on the surface and that flat top. Rotate it to the side. You can see it has that flat, parallel alignment. And then back over, shines a little bit, has some weathering surfaces on here. And then back over, parallel alignment of those minerals. So that's foliation, the parallel alignment of the minerals. Now if a sample is non-foliated, you won't see that, basically. You'll just see this kind of random arrangement of mineral grains in your sample. No arrangement whatsoever. So the next step is to take a look at the texture or the grain size. If you can see the minerals, then you know you have a coarse grained rock. If you can just barely see the minerals, maybe a little bit of a sparkle in there, then you know that you've got a fine grained rock. So coarse versus fine. The next step is to take a look at the mineral composition. So we're going to have um, samples that might have micas that stack up on top of each other. So we're going to have the nice thin flat sheets. In some cases, 
you're going to have ones that react to acid. So this is going to be your calcite fizzing. So you know you've got calcite present in this metamorphic rock. And then in this case here, sample is going to test it on your glass plate like you did in your sedimentary rocks. If it scratches the glass, you know you have quartz present. And also you can have um, potassium feldspar present as well. It's going to give you that whitish color. And then you might have some amphibole present, but pretty rare. Most of the time you're going to see the micas present. The next thing you're going to do is try to figure out what the parent rock of each of these rock samples is. And you're going to use your chart for this. Um, the, um, rock, the parent rock is going to be what it was before it was put under heat and pressure or metamorphosed. So usually a fairly similar composition. It might look a little bit similar. But sometimes it's really hard to tell. So that's why you're going to use that chart to help you out. So the last and final portion of your lab is to take the random box of rocks that you have and align these in order of metamorphic grade. So from low grade to high grade. So not a lot of metamorphism it would be the low end, to high would be lots of metamorphism, lots of heat and pressure, the most amount of change. And then what you're going to do is, once you have them aligned in metamorphic grade, is take the parent rocks and align your parent rocks next to each of those metamorphic rocks. And then either show me in class, take a picture of it, uh, and include it in your lab submission. So if I were to do this here just quickly, I'm going to first pull out all of the rocks that aren't metamorphic, that are probably going to be the parent rocks. Set those aside, and then I'm going to pull this one out here too. And so I'm left with these four samples. And so what I'm going to do is take a look at it and say, okay, which one looks like it could be the parent rock? Well, this one has some ripples in it. It looks like it's a mudstone. That is going to go on the far edge. That's my lowest metamorphic grade. And then I'm going to look over, oh, this one, I don't really see a whole lot of minerals in it. It just looks shiny. That's going to be the next step. This sample here, oh, I kind of see, like, there's some color bands. That one's probably pretty far along, so pretty high grade. So I'm going to put it at the edge. And I'm left with this one here, which is kind of shiny has some larger grain minerals, and I'm going to say it, maybe it fits in the middle here. So now I have them kind of going from low grade all the way up to high grade. So my next task is to figure out which of the other samples are going to be the parent rocks, or possible parent rocks to these samples. So I have a bunch of shale here, and guess what? Shale can be the parent rock to every single one of these mind-blowing. And then these samples are all possible parent rocks to this last one at the very end here. I can also add this granite in as another possible parent rock to this last one as well. And if I throw in a curveball here and I add quartzite, well guess what the parent rock to quartzite is? Quartz, sandstone, same composition. So you guys are going to have maybe a different set of rocks or maybe similar rocks in class to try to do the same thing with. So make sure you're using that identification chart to identify your samples and make sure you take a picture of those metamorphic grade and parent rock samples. So email me if you have questions and I'll see you in lab.